Hello and welcome to this edition of Africa Speaks. Today is the 6th of June 2015. My name is Joy Doreen Bira. And of course, uh, there is bad news from West Africa as Ghana's president, John Mahama, has called for three days of mourning after scores of people were killed in an explosion at a gas station in the capital, Accra. The death toll now at 150, including people who sought shelter from the floods at state-owned gas station Goel, located near a bus downtown intersection. Let's take a look at that story. Residents of Ghana's capital, Accra, are no strangers to floods that have become an annual occurrence. However, the latest disaster which hit the city on June 4, 2015, has not been witnessed before. An explosion at a sales point of the Ghana oil company Goyle at the Kwame Nkrumah Circle in Accra put the death toll at over 100 people, leaving thousands more displaced. Hours after the explosion, vehicles lay scattered across the gas station, some buried under collapsed roofs. Local communities lost power as authorities urged residents to stay on higher ground to avoid more casualties. Victims included drivers of public transportation and their passengers who were waiting out the rain away from the open bus terminals. Others were motorists who had stopped by to refuel their cars. We thought we had finished retrieving the bodies, but as we were doing our salvaging, we, were, we would begin seeing some other bodies again under the things. So if we begin taking any of those numbers we have gotten, and we are working, we are getting a new one, we will begin changing uh, the figures that we are giving. Last night, when it rained, we, when the flood was coming, we felt the smell of the petrol. Uh -huh. So I was standing at the window, praying that the rain should stop. Then all of a sudden, I heard a boy shouting, fire, fire, fire. So I saw the fire coming from downstairs, across. So I was, I was, I, I was coming out. And the people in the house also were coming to me. They said, no, there's no outlet there. So when we went out and put off the fires in the house, when I came back, I couldn't enter my room. Israel Larrier tweets, it's raining in Accra again. Not good news considering the earth is already saturated from Accra floods and likely to hinder relief ops. Akwasi Sapong adds, same script since 1968 and tweets a picture of vehicles carried off the roads by the strong current. And Anna Kuae Abe shared a tweet with a picture of him stuck on top of his vehicle. The car is moving slowly towards the main drain. I'm scared, he adds. Well, it was a sad state of affairs in Accra there. And much as we might have witnessed uh, flash floods in Nairobi, it wasn't as bad as it is in Accra, Ghana. Now, and just when you thought Boko Haram was only against former President Goodluck Jonathan, the terrorist group is, ex is suspected to be behind the latest attack where two suicide bombers struck a crowded market in the northeastern Nigerian city of Yola, killing at least 31 people. In more news, police in Nigeria say two suicide bombers have struck a crowded market in the northeastern Nigeria city of Yola while pretending to fight each other, killing at least 31 people. The assailants, with explosives strapped to their bodies, faked a scuffle on Thursday in order to attract more spectators that they could target at the Jimeta main market in the Adamawa state capital. The staged fight between the two men attracted the attention of people nearby to see what was happening and that is when the explosion happened. Suspects behind the attack are Islamist terror group Boko Haram. This comes shortly after President Muhammadu Buhari was sworn in and where he mentioned his duty or his priority was to fight the Islamist group that has caused sorrow to so many Nigerians. I came here particularly uh, to thank the president for helping the Nigerian troops to gain some of the territories from Boko Haram. All right, and well, it's not good news coming from West Africa, but let's come down to Eastern Africa. And of course, the past two weeks have seen a number of headlines uh, across all our media. But there's one very interesting story of a very um, 
young lawyer in Kenya who has put out his heart or has poured his heart out uh, to the United States and particularly to the White House. Now, let's look at the African tradition here. A very well-known characteristic of African marriage is payment of bride price, or what we locally refer to as dowry. Unlike in other cultures where dowry is paid by the parents of the girl, in non-Muslim black Africa, it is always the parents of the boy or the man who pay dowry to the parents of the girl. But with modern traditions, some families on the continent are eliminating the practice and using uh, the traditional occasion to appreciate the parents of the girl. Now in a rather interesting turn of events, there's a lawyer making headlines for either the right or wrong reasons, and he joins me now in studio. Should he be vindicating himself or is he here to still pour his heart out? Join me in welcoming Felix Kiprono, who is a young lawyer here in Kenya. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, thank you, Joy. Um, you've since changed your accent, since I think <laughs> that story aired. You've adopted an American accent. No, What's no, going on? No, it's not about uh, adopting the American or African accent as my accent since. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it has been your accent since? Yes, yes. Since, yes, since, yes. Since, since when? I, I, I mean, we all learn from this African culture and from this Kenya's education system, so <laughs> maybe I was lucky to be there by these <laughs> teachers of English, but I don't care about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, this should be an interesting discussion. So, um, you've offered 50 cows and 70 sheep and a number of goats. Mm -hmm. um, well, the, in America, they are putting it at about $90,000, but I think you need to calm down. In Africa, I think <laughs> it wouldn't amount to 90000 US dollars. It's much, much less than that. So. What exactly is going on? Are you just seeking, you know, cheap popularity or are you serious about this? No, 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 not at all. I hope you understand the seriarium of events here that encapsulate all these issues about the college and customer law. In fact, it wasn't, it, it wasn't my offer, it was the offer from the elders of my Kenya Goro clan of the college community. You know, in Kalenji we got the uh, subtribes and at the top we got the uh, Kaip 6 at the top followed by NDK, you up to the list of Ogig. So it's the Kenya Royal clan of the Kaip 6 community that offer that, <laughs> that, that, that offer is only booking over. You know, you should also understand the fact that Melia, currently she's a minor and uh, that offer was only meant to book, to booking her. It's not about the hand in marriage. I know, you, you're talking about booking, but uh, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've previously indicated in the Nairobian paper, which is an affiliate newspaper mm -hmm. uh, of the standard media, mm -hmm. uh, you've indicated that you've been fantasizing about this girl since she was 10 years old. I mean, 10 years old, aren't you a potential pedophile? No, 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 that, that, that's not true at all, because all those days when I was back in my high school, I was also a minor, and I just came to like about the first family, it's not about my love for the for that minor, I just came to like this first family, so it's, it's that my, my likeness with the first family that have really motivated me into uh, inducing the elders to make this booking offer. All right, so how exactly is this going to go? You recently also did intimate that you were going to the courts uh, to seek, uh, can I call it, more of an explanation to use the simplest uh, of words exactly. on you what the Constitution says. What exactly do you even mean by that? You know, since the time that I made this booking offer, there have been many reactions from the international community and also the local community saying that, you know, this culture, this in the African culture, it's all retrogressive, it's all, again, it's kind of motherly, and that's why I saw it well and fit to, first of all, subject the same process, the eyes of the court to make a determination whether the Kalenjin customer law, and by extension, the, the customer laws of other communities in Kenya is consistent to the constitution and by extension, the international law, because remember, the constitution, if you read about the Article 44, it opens mm -hmm. the application of the customer law. Also, Article 24 talks about the customer law being <laughs> being constant to uh, to to equity and also to that in not, not being reluctant to justice and morality. So I just want to call to adopt the same and the, the application that I'm set to launch before the court is for the court to determine whether my move and, and the customer law is constant to the Kenya's constitution because, you know, there has been this paradigm shift about the Kenya's customer law. Remember, if you read about the Article 40, 45 of the Kenya's constitution, it talks that, and it, it says clearly that parties to marriage are equal at the time of the marriage, during the marriage, and other dissolution of the marriage. So they are all equal, but 
the same has not been subjected to, there's no any case law, there's no any precedent to set the record straight. And that's why if you, the only case law that, that uh, on customer law is the SMO Tieno case. <laughs> and I like the locus classicus. But Justice Bosaya, he said that an African man is an African man. And that's why he, he awarded the same in the body of the late uh, city lawyer, SMO Tieno, to Nyalkuga clan because the court recognized then the existence of the customer law. And that's why he, he, the, the court uh, ruled in favor of the Nyalkuga clan of the Lua customer law. And that's why the move that I'm taking is for the court to determine whether the so-called token of appreciation, appreciation or the pride price or all that stuff about the customer law is considered the law. All right, let, let's just for one second forget about what the law says. In your right mind, do you think you're actually doing the right thing? I, I mean, I, I'm not seeking any hand of marriage with regards to the minor. I'm only booking the, my, my community is only the my my clan is making that o o offer to booking her but the the same is subject to the approval by that first family and also by the the, the said minor when she attains the age of maturity right now she's a minor and in fact we can't talk about her and that's why i've been talking about the first family that offer to the first family exactly now if you look at the screen there there are a number of headlines that have been made mm -hmm. you've made headlines all, all across board uh, i think cnn and all these other fox news the washington post and everybody has written about this story mm -hmm. and uh, you know, you've actually provoked a lot of, a lot of uh, ridicule from a lot of people, including citizens of the United States of America. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel, knowing that we're living in modern day Africa where uh, things like booking and all that mm -hmm. actually never cross people's minds in today's modern Africa? It, it does, and that's why with due respect to our constitution, it's not about uh, our customer laws or law about our moral of living being inconsistent with the law. It's all within the presence of the law, and that's why I told you if you read about Article 44 and Article 24, it recognizes by extension the existence of these cult uh, cultural norms and but these unwritten laws of the c customary. And that's why it has motivated me to really <laughs> go and seek the caste interpretation. So it's not about our laws being inferior. I think uh, th all these reactions about the international community, they are entitled to that reaction. And that's why I believe as Africa, there comes a time for us to rethink our, also, <laughs> our laws also, even though I may partly agree with them and also back also to dis disagree with them, but they are entitled to that reaction. Hmm. Yeah. All right, I'm just looking at some of the tweets that are coming through here, and somebody's saying, you know, you've adopted a, <laughs> a very fake American accent. Mm -hmm. Welcome back. You're watching Africa Speaks and uh, my guest in studio, Felix Kiprono. I'm really having a hard time trying to understand his English. And by the way, <laughs> I don't know if I should call it Kenyan American accent or um, anyway, let me just leave it at that. And he's here to tell us what exactly his motives are. And he's denying that he's not a pedophile. But he says his elders from his community, uh, that is the Kalenjin community, are the ones who have made an offer. It's a booking offer. It's not uh, that he is trying to propose to Malia Obama. But then uh, someone on Twitter called Mate is saying something is fishy about his motives. Why now? Because Obama is coming to town? No, no, no. M maybe I can say this is a matter of coincidence, but that does not mean like I just took advantage of this opportunity. No, no, no. I think it's just a good coincidence. It's just a coincidence? Yes. Okay. Somebody else here is saying, uh, this lawyer guy has already made moves <laughs> and dated Obama, in Malia Obama, in his head. Is that true? No, 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 no. I haven't. And th that's why initially I told you that I haven't fallen in love with that minor. It's only my likeness to the first family since the year 2008 when I was also still a minor. So you're not exactly uh, in love with her? No, no, I'm not. I'm not. It's just my likeness to the first family. So let, let's just uh, picture the, the list of scenarios. Mm -hmm. But if it just so happens mm -hmm. that maybe, maybe, you know, uh, President Barack Obama even responds to whatever offer has been made by elders from your community, what is gonna be a reaction if in the list of all things, he actually says he's going to sue your community? No, there's no point of suing because- Because much as he's the US president, he's yeah. also a lawyer. Yes. The first lady is a lawyer as well. Yeah. So if they say they're gonna sue your community, what are you gonna do about it? It's not it? about suing here because remember, I haven't married any 
offer the minor, this is just a booking offer. It's not a uh, it's not an offer for hand in marriage. This is a booking offer, and it has ex existed fr from the time immemorial. And even the international law, they recognize the issues about the <laughs> the, the, the customs. And that's why if you read even about the Article 38, 1B of the Statute of the International Court of Justice, it recognizes the customs. So <laughs> this is a norm that is even recognized internationally. So, but. The, the the point here is that it's not about the offer for uh, any marriage, it's just about the booking offer. All right, and we also have somebody here. Well, a lot of people are finding it hard to understand your accent, so maybe you might want to tell us, uh, did you grow up in the U.S.? Did you grow up here? No, no. Uh, <laughs> it's just an African accent. It's just a normal English unless you want to interview me in my... When you say community, you think that is a normal African accent? It's normal unless you want to interview me in my native language, then it's fine, but remember... As you know, Africans, you've, you've, you've said things like offer, mm -hmm. and you've said things like community. Mm -hmm. You've said, uh, you know... In our normal African accent, we would say community. Mm -hmm. We would say offer. You know, and, and, and you've used a totally different accent. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are saying you've adopted that accent since you made the offer to... No, no, no. Th th that's false. I think we should recognize the fact that all things we talk about the English lingua, it's a foreign language unless... I, I think also it's a challenge to us as Africans. I think there comes a time for us to really adopt our reign. Uh, or real African <laughs> native languages, for instance, you ought to have been interviewing me maybe in Kakai or in Kalenjin or any other tribe, lingua, but since it's an English, we just forced to do the same. All right, I, ca I can't deal with this anymore. So I would like to give you a minute mm -hmm. to just explain to people and what you'd want them to know what they've misunderstood about you and mm -hmm. what exactly you'd like to put right, because mm -hmm. I, I think I'm out of patience. I can't deal with this anymore. Thank you. I think, first of all, I, I beg to adopt the sentiment from the well-renowned professor. Today I was seeing the newspaper, the Daily Nation, paid the refer about another professor. I think he really or she really made that point of explaining about the, the, the African customer. Run. That's why I told you it just starts with a booking offer. If she's a minor, then it will come at that point of making a, a formal offer. Then now comes the dating and all that stuff. So all these are processes, and it's recognized by the law, both our constitution and also international law. So it's not about something <laughs> like new. It has been existing since the time immemorial, and it beats the subsequent test of the law. That's all. All right, and you've heard him. I don't even know why I said, you know what, let me have Felix Kiprono on air. But I just thought it was also a point for him to clear the air and make people understand. So from what I picked from him is his community made the offer, not exactly him. And he knows that Malia is a minor. She's 16 years old. And well, I don't even know what to say okay. after all this, but <laughs> I hope all these international headlines that are being made can okay. calm down a little bit because, um, well, what is 50 cows? What is 70 sheep? And I don't know how many goats, for crying out loud. Um, in, in, in some cultures, actually, they would go up to 200 goats. So 50 goats is, or cows is almost nothing. My name is Joy Doreen Bira. Africa remains a rising continent, and I'll leave you with that music video as a music video of the week. Land. They won't